Okay, so um, recap from uh, Friday. Uh, we started um, worksheet on page 15. Um, so part A, rotating about the line y equals negative 3. Um, if your dotted line is not up against the flat surface of your shaded region, then you know it's going to be a washer method every time. Because my axis of revolution is horizontal, which is y equals, I know that my radius has to be perpendicular to it. So in this case, perpendicular to a horizontal is vertical. So that's how we know it's going to be top minus bottom. Okay. And then once we do that, we extend our um, radius from the axis to the two boundaries, furthest boundary and then the closer boundary. Okay. Top minus bottom. One minus the negative three. For big R and little r, top minus bottom. Root x minus one minus negative three. And to find the bounds, we can take um, the intersection of these two graphs. So we set the root x minus one equal to y equals one. We solve for x, we get x equals four, and we get our volume. Right? Part B, uh, the challenging part for part B is recognizing that we're dealing with a vertical axis of revolution. So if we're dealing with a, a vertical axis of revolution. We know that our radius has to be perpendicular to it. So because of my axis is in this direction, my radius has to be in the other direction, it has to be horizontal. But as soon as you see a horizontal radius, you know that there are some additional work ahead of us, right? We can't just rely on the equations given to us. We have to rewrite these equations in a form that is suitable for right minus left. So we have to get that X by itself. So to get that X by itself, we add uh, one to both sides, raise both sides um, to power of two. Solve for X, we get X equals parentheses Y plus one squared. Okay, once we have everything in place, <clears throat> we do have this equation. This is um, the Y axis, Y axis is X equals zero. And now we can go ahead and do right minus left. Right, right minus left, big R is Y plus one quantity squared minus a negative one. Little radius is zero minus negative one. You see the right end point is sitting on the y-axis. The equation for the y-axis is x equals zero. We set up our bounds from the lowest to highest y value in terms of y, right? If we want to do right minus left, our bounds has to be in terms of y. The lowest y value is whatever this y value is for the curve. We know that this curve is starting at zero, so I can plug zero into the function. Root zero is zero, zero minus one is negative one. I know the y value at this point must be negative one. So the lowest y value that I see is negative one. The highest y value of my shaded region is a positive one. And the rest we can just use our formula, right? Big radius squared minus little radius squared. Okay. 
go ahead and read number two. See if you can start setting up your diagram for number two. So we really have to look at each problem individually to see whether it's going to be this method or wash method, right? And the way you can quickly tell is you look at your dotted line. If your dotted line is up against the flat surface of your shaded region, then it's this method, okay? If it's not up against a flat surface or if it's touching a point but not the entirely part of a curve, if it's just touching a, a portion of a curved region, or if there's complete gap, then you know it's going to be washing method. Okay. Okay. Does anybody still need to look at number one, A or B? So function three minus x squared, y equals negative two. I put the uh, x and y axis just as reference, but the x axis is not part of the boundary of the shaded region. Just there for reference. revolved around the line y equals three. So that's at the three minus x squared is the curve. So um, we know that's also the vertex. So it's just gonna kind of touch the surface of the top of the graph. Look at the dotted line, look at the shaded region. What do we have here? Disc or washer? What do you guys think? Washer method, right? Just because it's touching doesn't mean that it's this method, right? This method is if your dotted line is up against the flat surface of the shaded region, right? So the only place it's going to happen is if it was right at y equals negative two, then if the dotted line is here, then then yes, that would be this method. But here, right, it is touching, but you see all this gap here, right? You see this, this gap that we have to basically subtract out. All this is going to create a hole uh, in the graph, so we have to, or yeah, holes in our graph, so we have to um, subtract that out. We have to draw two radius. One radius will extend from the dotted line all the way to the furthest boundary of the shaded region. That's big R. Little radius will extend from the dotted line, the axis of revolution, to the closer boundary. And that's little r. So then we do top minus bottom. We look at what the top of big radius is touching. We look at what the bottom of big radius is touching, and we subtract those two expressions. Okay, so the top is sitting at the dotted line, which is 3. We look at bottom of big radius. Bottom is sitting at the negative two. Little radius. Top is sitting at three. But the bottom of little radius is sitting on the curve. So minus parentheses, right? This is important that we protect the bottom function with a set of parentheses so the negative doesn't forget to distribute through.
Okay, we have big R, we have little r, we still need to find what? Bounds, yeah. So we need to look for it. Now the x-axis doesn't play a role, right? We, we're looking for the intersection between the y equals negative two and the curve. We can set them equal to each other. Solve them by hand, which isn't too hard. You can also use numSolve, but if you use numSolve in your scientific calculator, you're going to have to um, give it two starting points so that it can find both of them separately. Because if you give it a starting point, it's only going to look for the closer one. It's not going to find the other one, so you need to go through it twice and find those two intersecting points. You can also use your graphing calculator and find the uh, intersection between the two, between the graph and the x axis, uh, between the graph and the line equals y, y equals negative two. Okay. But I'll work it out by hand. But um, if you're having trouble with your calculator, I can come around and help you out if you're not able to get those intersections graphically. Now, if you're doing it uh, graphically, um, it'll give you a decimal value for your intersections, which is fine. It's not going to it's not you're not going to be able to convert it back to root five, but if you just go to three decimal places, you'll still be pretty accurate. OK, any questions with part A? OK, part B, still the same shaded region. Rotating around the line y equals negative 2. OK, now look at the dotted line. Is that dotted line up against the shaded region? Yes, right. So it's just disk or washer method. This method, All right? So can you guys see that distinction here? All right. They're both touching, but this one is not up against the entire shaded region, but this one is. All right. So if, if it if it is up against the flat surface, there's no there's no need to subtract out a hole. There's no need for a second radius. This method is good enough for this, so. Okay, see so you guys finish this problem here.
Okay, so this uh, part piece should feel easier. Your bounds are the same. All you're doing is you're just drawing one radius. Okay, top minus bottom. The top is sitting on the curve. The bottom is sitting at the negative two. Okay, with the setup here. Okay, any questions with the first page? Okay, turn to the back, read that problem, um, set up that problem, see if you can decide uh, which formula to use. Is it washer? Is it disk? Is it top minus bottom? Is it right minus left? How do you find the bounds? How do you set it up? Use your calculator if needed. Okay, so let me kind of walk around and see if you're having any trouble with calculator or getting to any parts of the problem. Just to set it up to get it ready for the calculator. Anybody still need this page?
So I, I'm walking around seeing that you guys are drawing your, um, this is washer method, you're drawing your radius correctly, so that's good to see. Um, to find the bounds, there's two ways about it. You can, well, uh, solving it by hand is a little, it's kind of difficult to do, so we want to be able to use our calculator. So one way to do this is um, if you go to your graphing or your um, 36 Pro here, if you go to NumSolve, so that's going to be um, second sign. Type in that function. Oh, and by the way, um, that minus two, this is natural log of X minus two. So the minus two is not inside the natural log function. It's basically natural log of x, and then separately is minus 2. So that minus 2 is not inside, it's outside the natural log function. So parentheses, um, if you use num solve, you can um, set the equations equal to each other. Uh, you can start at 0 first to find that first intersection, because if you start at whatever value, it's only going to find one solution, and it's going to find the closest one to that closest intersection. Okay. Um, so in this case, um, I got 0.1585. That's the first solution. If I want to find the other solution, I have to set, set my x value closer to my second intersection. So maybe like 5 or 4 or even 6. So if I start at 5, then it's going to find the other one because the other one is closer to my starting point here. Okay, 3.146. If you're using a graphing calculator, then you're going to be graphing both functions and then using second trace intersect feature. Right. Right. See if um, part A makes sense. Identifying the top and bottom function, um, top minus bottom, uh, protecting the bottom function with a set of parentheses. Right? Otherwise, um, it'll throw off your answer. Right? You, you do need to put a set of parentheses when you're building your R of X and your little R of X. Right? These parentheses, if you don't have them in place, that could potentially throw off your your um, your expression at the end. Bigger number, what do you mean? Like having your which number goes to one, like for the upper and lower bound. Oh, got it, right. So the lower bound, that's right. So between the, between, between the bounds, it's always a smaller number below and okay. the higher number above. Yeah. yeah. In other words, uh, we're going from left to right. So we're always going to be stacking our uh, circular disk or circular so, uh, our cylinders from left to right for um, top minus bottoms, and then for right minus left, we're stacking, we're stacking from the bottom to the highest minus bottom. OK, any questions with, with A? OK, yeah.
Okay, okay, I see the issue. See that square there? That square is outside of that. See, yeah. Let's try to see the house. Nice. Again, uh, if you're if you're comfortable um, uh, representing your big R and little R in terms of y sub one and y sub two, um, the reason that I prefer that on the graphing calculator is because that way you're not having to play with as many parentheses, and sometimes the parentheses can kind of throw you off. It doesn't. It's not as obvious when when that mistake is made. So I encourage you to. Um, Hold your R1, hold your radius, a little radius under Y1 and Y2. That that way it just uh, maybe a little bit more effort, but then it just allows your um, your function to not have to. It's easier to spot your mistakes and then your. Um, yeah, sometimes the parentheses is hard to read, uh, especially if you have a lot of them going on. So something like this, right, where you can have that that Y1 and Y2 separated because you've had you have it under uh, you have radius one big r and little r under uh, in a separate location okay part b uh what's different about part b here yeah. still wash your method because your dotted line is not going to be up against the shaded region it's not up against the flat surface of the shaded region yeah. Yeah. Vertical axis, horizontal radius. Okay. So if it's a horizontal radius, that means it's right minus left. If it's right minus left, what's the additional step that we have to take for all right minus left? Yeah. The equations are typically not set up for you. You've got to rewrite the equation in the correct form. So this equation, natural log of x minus 2, is perfect for top minus bottom, but it is not in the right spot. It is not written in the right form for right minus left. So I got to solve for x. I got to add 2 to both sides. I want to get to that x, but x is stuck inside natural log. What can I do to release that x away from natural log? If I raise both sides with E as the base, that allows the left side, the right side to clean up nicely. I can finally isolate that X. All right, so now this is the this is the equation for the curve that I want to use. The line is easier, right? Y equals X minus four. If I rearrange that, I can get X equals Y plus four. Now I'm ready to create my right minus left uh, expressions. Okay, but then on top of that, what else do we have to do um, besides finding big R and little r? The bounds, right? The bounds have to be in terms of what? There's a Y. So in your graphing calculator, you, it's relatively easy. If you just um, find those intersections, you can just also um, identify their Y values. So you just find those order pairs. Okay. Now, if you're using a scientific calculator, it should be pretty easy as well. You, you take the bounds that you use from part A, and you take these decimal values, and you insert it into either equation. Right. You, you just plug it into either function. Get the y value, and those y values will be the ones used here. Okay, so there's no need, to, don't need to graph anything. You know, it's still the same intersection. You just need to find a different piece of information. So insert the 0.1586 into either the natural log of x minus 2 or the x minus 4. It doesn't matter because they both share the same order pair at those intersecting points. I think big radius is right minus left, y plus 4 minus a negative 1. 
little r, uh, little radius is the e to the y plus 2 minus the negative 1. Yeah, I want to use numsolve. I would just um, take the x value that you got from uh, part A, the intersection, plug it into either function, and you should be able to get this negative one eight five three. Okay. Yeah. So take the take the one point one five eight six and the three point one four six and insert into either equation, and they'll they'll give you the y values there. Yeah. Oh, you found the first one, but you didn't find the second one. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay, all right. So if you want to find the second one, uh, start at closer to this number. So this negative 0.853 is a little higher up. So you need to uh, go to like negative five or negative six so that you can actually find this value. But how would I know that? How would you know the first one? Right, how would you know that? Um, well, the graph is drawn for you. You know that the 0.8, Point eight is over here, so you know that the one that's further down is going to be yeah. So you want to just start if you start at even like negative if you even if you don't know this value, you can start at like negative five, negative six, and it'll find this value before it finds that one. Okay. Okay, all right, we'll finish off with the bottom here, uh, number four. Looks like you guys said in number 4A relatively well. The dotted line is off the shaded region, so there's a gap. You've got to do wash your method, but it's going to be horizontal rectangle, right? So.
right minus left, our equation needs to be rewritten. The, um, the curve is now going to be x equals positive square root of y minus 2. Now, typically, if you solve an equation with square roots involved, you always say plus or minus, right? But we don't include the, the minus because the minus is on the other side of the uh, in the negative region, which is not showing up in our in our parabola. So we're only showing half the parabola. So it's only on the positive side. So only positive square root of y minus two. And then um, <clears throat> the other boundary is the x equals four. So then we do right minus left for big R. Right endpoint is sitting at the negative, sorry, five. Left endpoint is sitting at the, the uh, square root. So it's five minus square root of y minus two. And little r is right minus left, so five minus four, which is one. And then we're stacking these circular uh, rings from the lowest to the highest y value of the shaded region, okay? so. Remember, if you're doing bounds, you never look at the dotted line. OK, only look at the shaded region. You only care about the boundary for the shaded region. The lowest y value is one. The highest y value is whatever that intersection is. We, there's no need to use um, graphing calculator. You can just you know that that intersection is when X is four. So if you just insert four into the curve, you'll get 18 and 18 is as high as that y value is going to go on the shaded region. Okay, let's finish off with part B. For part B, do you see any gap between the dotted line and the shaded region? Yeah, no gap, right? So all we need is one radius. It's just going to be this one. It should feel easier than A. And all the information from part A, you can just bring in, right? You have the equation rewritten already. You have the bounds already a, a, a bound. So part B should go pretty quickly because it's right minus left, but you've already done all the hard work for right minus left from part A.
Okay, check part B. Any questions with Part B? So guys, tomorrow, um, ACT day, uh, seniors, you'll be, um, it'll be asynchronous for, for you. Um, not going to assign any um, work for tomorrow, except for you guys to finish up on the homework, which I'm going to check on Wednesday. Okay. Um, so tomorrow, if you're here, we're just going to, uh, um, and um, I'll just put a, I'll put together a worksheet, practice worksheet, just more practice with uh, this and washer method. And uh, I'll also post it on the website. So if you're at home and you want to go to another worksheet, I'll have that ready for you so you can um, have that as a resource. But most of the class periods will be pretty short tomorrow between 20 and 25 minutes. And uh, we start at uh, 1230. So. Um, Bye, thank you. Um, Wednesday, we'll cover the last uh, topic, which is um, cross sections uh, of, of uh, other areas. And then um, I'll show this guy over. Following by cross section will be Wednesday. We'll do a review. Thursday, no school Friday or Monday, and then we'll have review Tuesday, Wednesday, and then our um, unit test for chapter seven area volume will be next Thursday. 